let's take a look at removing these old fats. Okay, it's looking pretty good, actually. No, no pad right there, of course, because it, it was burned in the fire and destroyed. But this side's got the big fat trace, so all is good. As I dig into this further, it turns out that I bought these 0.22 ohm resistors because they were three watts. So this is a three watt resistor. It, you know, there's nothing, there's one watt and there's three watt. So, that, and the one watt just not big enough. And to me, that's what was in there before. But uh, if I want a three watt resistor, I'm going to have to have this one. It's, you can see it's, there's obviously plenty of room down here, and I'm gonna. You know, it needs to be off the board a little bit anyway. So this was probably the toughest spot right here, right next to this uh, air coil, and so I think it can be tilted over a little bit, and then there should be enough clearance. So I think you know this will probably find this. Looks these are heavy DD looking resistors, so I don't think they're gonna fall off the board because of vibration and i want one lead to have just a single bend in it for the strength at least one lead so this is probably gonna have to be, be the solution looks great everywhere because of this this whole this is the power rail here and and it's um really wide so there won't be any We'll sit there like that. It'll look fine. We're set up to monitor the output voltage of the preamp section. So this 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 preamp section is powered right now. It's it's running like a you know 350 volts or whatever for the plate voltage for the one two AX sevens, and I'm just plugging a guitar into this input. And I, I'm monitoring the output voltage. We're at 50 volts per division on this. So you can see it's putting in, putting out in excess of 50, uh, plus minus 50 volts, it looks like. But I have this, what I noticed was it tacks, it gets a very high voltage. See, like you could see there's a root, I can put the trigger down here at. 150, 150 volts and it triggers and look at that that's actually up there's a hundred full 150 volts right there so the gates of those fats have to be protected from those sort of excursions which kind of sucks because it's like clipping the signal with you know zeners which doesn't sound very musical to me and i'm pretty sure that's going to make bad sound so th the thing is though the fats are plus minus 14 volt input this fat test circuit is powered with a bench top supply plus minus 15 volts for the pn complementary output stage there's a the clamp right there and there's a the clamp this is the p side and this is the n n channel side so there's a clamp on each on each side and then these are the buzz 901 and 906 mosfets so right now i have 1200 hertz going and you can see uh channel one 
the lower one is the input voltage from the it's essentially the output of the cathode follower 1 to AX7 and the output is the out across an 8 ohm resistor that the bridge is driving so anyway there's the real 90 volts that uh, is, is going to replace the bench stop supply and and drive these fats so these guys are going to we got plus minus 90 volts it's going to be glorious Okay, one last look. Bench supply is maxed out at 31 volts or plus or minus. LFETs are installed and we're monitoring the output voltage across this load and the input voltage from the preamp section. And as I bring up the output, you can see. very robust there that's 60 watts out of that power supply that's pretty good things seems to work and we're actually looking very good here looks like we're just on the edge but I am on 9 this thing is running pretty well oh the voltage is dry I hit the current limit here see That's one I want. Okay, there we go. Now we're back to just a little more than an amp I needed. One amp per side, 31 volts, and 60 watts. Okay, I think I'm ready to install it and hook up the 90 plus minus 90 volts bus supply. That's the uh, bus voltage for the fats, uh, the positive side anyway, the negative side is about the same, only minus. <laughs> for division on the scope. So we put on some serious power into the fryette. Mm -hmm. 
Pots are scratchy. I suppose I should spray them out with tech spray, but it looks like this thing works pretty well. <laughs> You're gonna get feedback with uh, this fry it. I'm taking a look at the the tr this trim potentiometer here, this is not drawn as a potentiometer, this is adjustable. H looks like it may be a hundred turn. It's adjusting on a divider string between the minus 90 and the plus 90. Uh, so as this, this uh, resistance is increased, the bias of this gate, of all the gates, is increased. This bias is decreased. Uh, and and that by increasing the gate bolt, increasing the gate voltage here or decreasing the gate voltage here is going to turn on these fats. So uh, ideally, we want near zero quiescent current. The quiescent current that goes through this N channel through this P channel by measure of voltage drop across these 0.22 ohm resistors. So is is this gate voltage, for instance, is brought up a little bit with, by increasing trim one. There'll be a little bit of conduction that happens here in the steady state, and we'll be able to measure that voltage across these convenient 0.22 ohm source resistors. Uh, same with the the, D, the P channel side. On the negative side, the trade-off is there may be crossover distortion, and we kind of balance between minimizing our quiescent current and audio signals that don't experience. Okay, now we'll take a look at the, the quiescent current adjustment uh, by adjusting the gate bias on these FETs. So this meter is looking at the P-channel 0.22 ohm resistor voltage drop. So that's showing the conduction through the uh, P-channel side and this is the N-channel side. And I have them oriented so they're both plus voltages for convenience. Uh, they're, they're pretty closely matched. We have zero quiescent voltage coming across that fat. So uh, what we want to do now is, is put a sine wave through the uh, system into a dummy load. Um, it'll be pretty obnoxious sounding, but I'm going to bring up the gain on the function generator. That's what, and you can see right away that there is crossover distortion. Uh, so we want to we, we like the fact that the quiescent current is low. It's not really meaningful now that we're running a signal. But we like that the quiescent current is low, but we have to sacrifice a little bit of uh, quiescent current to overcome this crossover distortion. So I'll adjust the trimmer here and get it on there. Now I'm going to start bringing up the quiescent current. And you, and you can kind of see the crossover distortion is beginning to disappear. So the idea is to just get it to the point it just disappears. And we don't want to raise the quiescent current anymore. So that's looking pretty clean right there. So now I'm going to turn off the signal. And we have a little bit of current, a little mismatch. The P channel side is a, has a little lower conduction. The N channel side is conducting a tiny bit more. Uh, to, to determine the current, this is 1.7 millivolts divided by 0.22 ohms, so it's it's fairly low current, and we have a fairly clean looking signal now. 
and I think that's probably the idea. I will play with that a little, little more, but uh, we shouldn't see the heating of the heat sinks that I was noticing when I was doing the first demo. Uh, when I put, measured the, the uh, quiescent current initially, the this pot was set completely in a bad spot where it was, it, we had a pretty high bias on the FETs and, and a pretty high conduction on both FETs. So it was basically just dumping energy uh, with no signal. So now it's it, it's uh, adjusted to a reasonable level, that's, but overcoming the crossover distortion.